joining us at the beautiful, amazing Natural Hazards Research Australia booth to hear all about what we do. We do a lot. Monday was my three month anniversary of being at NHRA and I'm still learning about all the things that we do. It's a, it's a crazy, busy, awesome journey. So we're gonna run through about half a dozen of those things this morning in little uh, vignettes and maybe something will apply to you. Maybe something will apply to one of your colleagues or perhaps your organization. So just log them and be in contact with us afterwards. I would like to acknowledge our elders past, present and future that guide us on our journey at NHRA. We have a very strong First Nations pathway program that we're uh, working through and we'll talk a bit about that today. And the um, acknowledgement of our people, the place we're standing on today, the Tumbalong people in the Gadigal clan on the Eora Nation. So I'm from Mianjin up in Brisbane and it's great to be down here. Before we kick into what we do, we should hear from who leads us. So I'll pass to Andrew Gissing, who's our CEO, to say a few words. Thank you everybody for uh, coming along and hearing a little bit about our education and training programs this morning. Uh, we know that future workforce in our sector is a big significant thing that we need to continue to grow. We know the complexity of natural hazard risk only continues to increase. And with that, the need for skilled folks in our workforce to be the future policy makers and those that influence future capability into our future. And that's why NHRA has a sophisticated education and training program to be able to offer that through universities and through other partners, to be able to uplift the skills in our workforce to produce the future policy makers and those that will influence our future capability in the context of worsening natural hazard risk. So thank you again for coming along and thank you too in advance for our speakers who are gonna highlight various aspects of the program here today. So thank you. Taking a stroll through our programs and what we're up to at NHRA, first one we're gonna start with is our postgraduate program. So we have 39 PhD students who are currently affiliated with the work at NHRA. Three have already finished and that's a big deal. We're only three years young. So to have that already happening is fantastic. And 22, I think, associate students who are on their journey with us, getting access to the conferences and events and um, profile opportunities. I'm going to invite Suki Jasaiwal, who's a PhD student with us at NHRA, to say a few words. Thanks, Suki. Thank you, Cheryl. So my name is Suki. My research is on the impact of bushfire smoke on the ice surface, and I work with both firefighters and the general community. This work is really important because eye symptoms are one of the most common symptoms to be reported following exposure to bushfire smoke. The Natural Hazards Research Australia Postgraduate Scholarship has allowed me to switch tracks from a clinical optometrist into a research career. It's also given me lots of opportunities to engage with firefighters and their agencies who've come on board to uh, co-design my research and also act as participants. They've also shown lots of interest in hearing about the outcomes of our research and learning how they can implement it into their workforce. Okay, the next one we're going to is our Early Career Research Fellowship. So this part of our NHRA program allows our colleagues to be able to develop their networks further, catch up with us throughout um, forums and events, come along to events like this. And we have provided five fellowships inside that Early Career Research fellowships program. Uh, we've got um, Kate Brady, who's one of our research fellowship uh, folk today, who's um, talking in the conference program. And the next year's fellowships are opening soon, like imminently. So please stay tuned via the newsletter if you want to sign up to make sure that you're um, informed about that. The industry internship program is the next one we're going to talk about briefly. And this is all about making sure that we've got real world experiences inside our PhD programs and our, H, I should say, higher degree research programs. Shabnam Vasi is from RMIT and uh, she's taking um, uh, one of those programs as our inaugural recipient. And I would love to talk about uh, what New South Wales is experiencing with Shabnam. And I'm going to call on Cameron to say a few words about that. Thank you, Cameron. I'm Cameron from the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service and Shabnam's come on board with us this year as, a, as an intern. Uh, and it's been fantastic to be able to access the internship program because it helps build our uh, our capability and to go and do things that we really love to do but don't often have the capacity to, to do. And we can bring in someone you know, very smart, very engaged and, and throw them in a research project over a six or seven month period. Uh, and so it solves a problem for us, but really importantly, we're really big supporters of building capacity in our industry, um, building that next generation of researchers and leaders and we've seen through previous internships through our organisation that we invariably go on to employ those individuals because we, we bring good people in, they're exposed to the work that we do. We get exposed to them 
uh, and uh, invariably we then end up employing them and they become our next generation of, of uh, fire managers and emergency managers. Uh, so yeah, if you do have the opportunity, I'd certainly encourage you to put your hand up to take on an intern. So we've talked about our postgraduate program, we've talked about the early career research fellowships, we've talked about the industry internship program with Shabnan and Cameron's experiences. We're now going to talk about something that's a little bit less formal, possibly more fun. Is it more fun? No, equally fun. It's our early and middle career academics and practitioner network. Tried to think of a really cool acronym for that and came up with MCAP. No one else uses MCAP on the planet. So anyway, we'll go with that one for now. So the MCAP network is a great way for our early careers and middle career colleagues, whether you're in industry or you're in uh, universities or other places where you're doing that kind of um, applied research, come along and be involved. It's as easy as clicking on the website and popping in your details and who you are and what you're up to. I think we've got about 50 so far. It's only been open for about six weeks and there is a QR code to sign up to that that is just on the table here afterwards. So a quick way to get access to it. Two minutes of your time, who knows what will open up for you. We have a great steering committee uh, looking after that. And I would like to invite Tom uh, Cooper Johnson, who's the co-deputy chair of our MCAP network, to come and say a few words about how they're setting that up and what they're up to. Thanks, Tom. I'm one of nine of the committee members that's uh, working on this MCAP network. Uh, we've met a few times already, including a face-to-face, -face, grueling six-hour meeting on Monday, and we were just trying to identify some of those key issues that we're all facing as early and mid-career researchers. Now, a lot of what we discovered is it's uh, centralized around that idea that we still have this gap between practitioners and academics. And we've got some ideas on how we might address that. But we're also putting out a questionnaire to our broader network to make sure that all of our events are really targeted to what we all need. So over the next six months, you can expect to see a few things. We're going to grow. Hopefully, we'll get a few more sign up today. We're going to host some uh, webinars that are focused on those issues that we identify through that questionnaire. Uh, we're going to uh, have some social events, so some networking, some drinks, and then we're also going to facilitate a workshop prior to the Natural Hazards Research Forum next year. So it's just starting, but I think it's very exciting. If you have the time, if you're an early or mid-career researcher, then please sign up. And if you're not, then please just spread the word. Thank you. So if you're interested in any of what I've talked about so far around that industry-connected, university-connected world, we have our partnerships director here today, so Sarah's waving at us all. Please go and see Sarah. Sarah knows the NHRA way of the world um, off by heart, with her eyes closed, uh, any time of day or night. No, just today at the booth in the blue area. Uh, but feel free to come and ask her questions. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah. We have another activity that goes on every year that you might have seen in fluorescent colours on our uh, LinkedIn posts, etc. It's called the Disaster Challenge, and it's about activating our critical and imaginative thinking in the workplace and in the university space around how we could problem solve for those wicked challenges that we face. This year's Disaster Challenge is being led by Brendan McAtee, who's over here um, in the audience. You can wave, Brendan. So come and talk to Brendan about what that is. We are always looking for new ideas for future disaster challenges about what the wicked theme is that we address that year. And this year's disaster challenge uh, finals, we have three teams, will be presenting pitching in Perth uh, in the beginning of October. So if anyone's here from WA, come along. Uh, otherwise, it will be a hybrid event and uh, you'll be able to dial into that, so stay tuned. It's really interesting to see how groups come together to problem solve from around the country. And it definitely is across that researcher and practitioner uh, uh, space. So as Tom was talking to around the practitioner network, this is an example for our researchers to practice working together in doing those applied problem solving. Speaking of researchers embedded with practitioners inside organisations, uh, we have a few things that are happening at the moment. We've got a project on evaluating resilient home, uh, the Homes Fund in Queensland. And just to highlight that Tiara Rior uh, Tyler Riordan and Kate Meisner are actually already in place in, uh, in our Queensland Government uh, Reconstruction, QRA, Queensland Reconstruction Authority, and also in the Department of Housing and Local Government and Planning and Public Works. Uh, so if you're thinking that you might want to have that kind of experience, that's also an opportunity to talk with Sarah or Andrew about how that could take place. And really that collaborative model of co-designing the key elements of what you want researched in small packets 
can help you potentially build into the larger research programs that you can see in our brochures. Further opportunities. There are some exciting developments coming up later this year. Uh, we've got a First Nations Scholarship Program that we're kicking off. That has been an 18 month journey for us in finding a way that we are not just issuing scholarships for people to apply for, but we actually take the human centered approach for human beings to move through their research career pathway. So the EOI that's gonna come out is actually at the university level and we will be partnering with one or more universities to deliver that program of works over the coming seven years. So if you're connected to a university and you're interested in being part of that, that is unprecedented in Australia to have a program that then shepherds through human beings. And as those humans finish their research career pathway journeys, maybe up to the end of PhD, it could be masters or whatever it is, we then track into supporting others. So super excited to talk about that. That's going to be advertised shortly as the expression of interest to apply for. So make sure your institutions know to apply for that. The actual scholarship opportunities will come up thereafter next year. Uh, we are also advertising for people to join our First Nations pathway. So if you're an, a First Nations colleague and you're thinking about ways that you can contribute back into the sector and also get some energy from the sector in a you know, reciprocal uh, arrangement, then please let us know because that pathway journey for us is really important over the years ahead. I think that about wraps up our session for today. I can see lots of friends of the family around in the crowd. So if you've got a couple more minutes to say g'day or turn to the person next to you and say, are you a ring in or are you someone new? You'll probably find an opportunity to have something to say. So looking forward to talking with you over the next rest of remaining today and tomorrow. Thanks everyone.